And guys, the final thing that we need to do, and probably the most important one, if we wanna have some serious topical authority, is everyone seems to be talking about topical authority, but what does it mean and how can we improve ours? We're gonna cover all of that in today's video. So topical authority is quite literally how much authority we have in a specific subject or area. The more topical authority we have, the more Google trusts us and the easier it's gonna be for us to rank in that specific space. Obviously, given that we do everything else correctly. But how do we gain topical authority again? So we're gonna look at three main ways that we can do that. And the first one is content. So as you guys know, high quality content is the bread and butter of SEO. But to be topically relevant, we need to take over that whole topic. So what do I mean by that? We basically wanna write as much high quality content as possible for that specific niche and for that topic. So let me give you guys an example. Let's say I've created a website where I wanna talk about keto breakfasts. So what I wanna to do to start off is I wanna find as many keywords and as many subtopics as possible to write about. So I can do this in a couple of ways. So we can use something like Answer the Public, which is free. Let me show you guys how this works. So I've added in keto breakfast recipes into Answer the Public, and this is what I get. So there's a bunch of questions that you can check out, but the more relevant section is gonna be down here in the preposition section. So keto breakfast ideas without almond flour, without eggs, without cooking. So we're gonna get a lot of different ideas here. Keto breakfast recipes to freeze, uh, recipes to go. We have comparison type of keywords. So we have keywords that are comparisons. So for weight loss, for beginners with avocado, nutrition, information, cream cheese, so on and so forth. So Answer the Public is a great place to start to get a lot of these ideas. Another phenomenal place that we can go to is something like Surfer SEO, a link for that in the description. Using Surfer's Content Planner is as easy as typing in the keyword. I've already done it, so we can just access it right here. I added in keto breakfast recipe, and it generates a variety of these clusters that are basically all the research that you would do, but it actually does it within a few clicks, right? So we have keto breakfast, keto omelet, sausage breakfast sandwich, waffle, well, we can go on and on and on. Peanut butter breakfast. So these type of resources are really gonna help you fill out that content bubble and make sure that you're covering absolutely all of it. And once we have all these topics, we're gonna go out and create content for anything that's relevant. It's also very important just to make sure that when you find an idea that you think makes sense, just plug it into a keyword research tool just to see if there's any meaningful volume, right? We always wanna target keywords that have some type of volume. That's gonna help us get traffic in the future. Future. Once we have all these ideas, we then need to make sure that we organize them on our website properly. One of the best ways to organize all this content is with something called topical clusters. So I'm sure you guys have seen this image right here. It's given to us by HubSpot and this basically outlines what a topical cluster looks like. So we want to create a pillar page and have a bunch of supporting cluster pages around it that are properly connected. And that main pillar page is targeting a broader and more generic keyword that might have a lot of volume. And then around that pillar page, we're gonna have a bunch of supporting content that's targeting smaller keywords that supports that main pillar. And the most important part is that all of these articles, all of these pieces of content are properly connected by using internal links. So let me give you guys a few examples of what some phenomenal topical clusters look like. So this domain we're looking at right now is winefolly.com and they're basically targeting that huge keyword beginner's guide to wine, right? And we're gonna see that this is the main pillar page, guys, because we're gonna see a bunch of different links that take us to smaller supporting pages that are gonna have their own volume, their own keywords, but are still extremely relevant to this main idea, to this beginner's guide to wine, right? So if we click into any of these pages, we're gonna find that they're their own type of content, right? And all of this content is very well structured and very well written. So this is a great pillar page example. Another great example is brought to us by the people over at Ahrefs and they have this incredible SEO guide, so a beginner's guide to SEO. So it's a really well done pillar page, a lot of internal links, all of them pointing to different articles that have their own traffic, right? And that are supporting that main pillar. So a topical cluster is just one of the many ways of organizing the content on our website. It's something that's become a lot more popular and quite trendy recently. It's definitely not the only way, but it's a way that works 
works to make sure that we're keeping that content well connected and organized. The second thing we need to do to improve our topical authority is ensure that we're following EAT best practices. So as a review guys, that's expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. And guys, as a side note, this is especially relevant if you're in the YMYL niche. So these are topics that can directly affect a person's health or finances. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna list a few important things that we need to do to improve our EAT in Google's eyes. I'm gonna list it right here so you guys can take a screenshot of that. But I do wanna cover the last point, this point number five, we're talking about author bios. I wanna show you guys a few phenomenal examples of people using this author bio section. If we check a big website like Healthline, I've just opened up a random Healthline article. And as we're gonna see, the author name is right here. Uh, we have the date as well. And we see that it's fact checked by someone else. So if we click into the author, and this is exactly what we need to be doing, guys, we're gonna see that the author has their own little description and he even has a real Twitter profile. So this is something that we need to follow. It's gonna help us a lot with that EAT. So we do see that he has a real Twitter profile. And guys, the final thing that we need to do and probably the most important one if we wanna have some serious topical authority is to get high quality backlinks from people that are relevant in our space. So in my opinion, this is honestly the most high impact thing we can do. And if we take a step back to think about this, writing good content is something that's available to everybody, right? So we can easily replicate content that our competitor has done, just like our competitor can replicate our content. However, high quality backlinks from someone in our space is really, really difficult to replicate. Not only does that involve forming real relationships with people, but it also involves providing real value. That vote of confidence for someone in your space is the most high impact thing you can do to gain topical authority. If you're looking to learn about link building, check out this beginner guide. And otherwise, if you're more advanced, check out this advanced link building video. I'll see you guys in the next one.